This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys. Heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. So if you've got car questions, we've got car answers. And we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also text us at 411-923. If you're just not a phone person, you can text us. Just make sure you're not driving. And today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we're going to tell you about some family fun that you can get involved with this weekend. Uh, of course, we're taking your phone calls and your text and answering any questions you might have. And Matt, we haven't talked since 2013 about the old catalytic converter. Reed's feeling a little feisty in there. It's been a feisty week. I was a little feisty yesterday. Oh, it, man. And it's not just for all those folks out there. It's not a Cadillac converter. We can't convert your car to a Cadillac. It's a catalytic converter. Catalytic you, converter. Don't you love that phone call? Uh, Virginia Auto Service, good afternoon. May I help with? Yeah, I'm much for a Cadillac converter. <laughs> say, well, do you really want your car to be a Cadillac yeah. I mean, you got a nice Buick now or a Toyota. You don't want a Cadillac. You want a catalytic. Catalytic converter. You know, I'd be honest with you, I hardly know how to spell that word. I can say it. I can talk about it. But there's a reason I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mechanic. Catalytic. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the catalytic converter. You know, last week we talked about check engine lights. And why is a check engine light on? And probably the number one reason people put that little black piece of tape over their uh, check engine light is they've got a 420 code. Is a code in their computer, Something's and that's smoking. what's turning the check engine light on. Yep. The old 420 code, and and that's that's a catalytic converter efficiency code. Let's it's, let's back up one step though, Dave. I wanna, all right, because right. last week what we talked about was when it's okay to ignore the light. You know, should you ignore the check engine light, or can you in certain cases? And, and there's many reasons you can. When we talked about the relationship with the shop, you know, you want to be able to have one to go in and have your guy check it real quick and determine. You know, is this freak out mode or is this all right? We'll see. Yeah, you next, put see that you, on the back burner for a moment. Next, see you next week. Um, um, so, oftentimes we see a catalytic converter code in conjunction with a misfire code, mm. and the misfire is when the check engine light's flashing, and you absolutely shouldn't be driving the car because the misfire is what kills the kitty. You don't want to kill the cat. <laughs> you don't want to kill the cat. And cats, catalytic so, converters do not have nine lives. So, and now we get and into then, the catalytic converter, right? Okay, all so right. I just want to just lay that little foundation of, of it, you know, it, the, a catalytic converter will last forever in theory. Something has to make it go bad. All right. Well, if you're saying, what the heck is a catalytic converter? Okay. Your engine in your car ingests air, it breathes in air. And then it breathes, you know. Then it also drinks gasoline at the same time, and it swishes it swishes it around in its mouth, and then it combusts it and burns it. And that's where you get that's where you get combustion, the internal combustion right engine. Out the tailpipe. And then it spits that that exhaust fumes out the tailpipe. All right. Everyone's familiar with the muffler. You know, muffler is what keeps that exhaust because there's a bunch of mini explosions going on inside your engine, and the muffler muffles that. The catalytic converter is its kind of like a filter. It filters that exhaust to get the pollutants out of it. Uh, and, but, you know, a filter in your home, your air filter for your air condition, is gonna is actually going to stop the debris and it's going to get stuck there. A catalytic converter doesn't work like that. So it just passes the exhaust through this catalyst and it changes the chemical compound and shoots it out the tailpipe. That's uh, a pretty simple way to describe that, Dave. I'm proud of you. It's all <laughs> over. We can end the show now. <laughs> all right. Let's go home. Let's go home. That, that, that's how they work. So anything after 19... When is... That thing was invented in 74. I mean, not invented, but started to be I mean, used. Catalytic, catalytic, Cadillac, catalytic converters were originally, I think, developed in the 50s, I thought we read earlier today. Uh, our crack research team of right. Dave and Matt. <laughs> and, uh, Wikipedia.com. For the, you know, for smokestacks. But I think, and then they were evolved into automobile use in the 70s. I, I said this before. I had a 76 280Z and it had a catalytic converter on it. Many of those... 
I mean, they started in California. That's where I think they, they really California started coming missions. strong. But I'd say after 19, boy, I'd have to say 1980, just about everything had one, unless it was really heavy truck or something Yeah, like my that. parents had a 1986 Chevy Suburban. It was a three-quarter ton, and it, it used regular gas. They mm-hmm. were proud of that. Oh, we can use regular in that. But that's when, that's when regular went away. It was when the catalytic converter came around because catalytic converters in uh, well, the and, lead, in lead don't the get lead. along. Yeah, so basically the catalytic converter is a, is a honeycomb. It's a ceramic material with all these precious metals, uh, platinum and palladium and polonium carbide. Yeah, polonium carbide. That's my favorite. Uh, Bloating carbide sandwich. Yes. <laughs> Miracle Whip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, but it's just so it's it's it needs a lot of surface area because all the exhaust has to pass through there. There's the the unburned fuel and the, the other pollutants in the exhaust stream, and so we need a lot of surface area, and and uh, and that's what that honeycomb is. It's basically a beehive. There's a certain amount of material, a brick of material in there, and as it goes over, it, it makes that chemical reaction and cleans the air. You can. Wrap your lips around that tailpipe and just breathe away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Is is as good as the modern car runs? Uh, you know, in uh, what do they call that combustion? Stoichiometric. Stoichiometric. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I mean, in the combustion process, they've got it so efficient and they got it so perfect. And with uh, with the way that thing runs and the computers as quick as they are now, and the catalytic converter, what's coming out the tailpipe is not what's making everybody's eyes water. Yeah, you just decide you want to do yourself in and go park in a garage. You're going to be there a couple of weeks. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Fill know, the tank up with gas first. <laughs> the car is going to run out of gas before you. Uh, so you dive carbon monoxide it's not poisoning. funny. <laughs> well, <it's> kinda. <laughs> I mean. But yeah. uh, but uh, yeah, so it's um, they 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 do burn really clean as long as all that's working. But what the car does is it self tests. So it's got it's got a couple of oxygen sensors. Some are called air fuel sensors. They, they they're the same but different. And what they do is they uh, measure. You know, there's after the exhaust leaves the combustion chamber, it goes into the exhaust manifold and that that funnels into a pipe. And then there's a uh, there's a ca- uh, oxygen sensor. I can't. Someone keeps uh, about making... ready to get the church laughs going. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. And it and it measures the condition of the exhaust, and then the exhaust enters this, this catalytic converter. And there's a there's an oxygen sensor on the other side of the catalytic converter. And what the computer is looking for is looking for a difference or a delta. It wants to see that 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 air is getting cleaned up. And at some point, is the catalytic converter doesn't technically wear out, but it becomes less efficient. It's saying, "Hey, we got a problem. Our catalytic converter is not efficient like it should. It's not doing the job it should." And so the code that everyone knows is the P0420 catalytic catalyst efficiency code. Mm-hmm. And so that will turn on your check engine light because as we talked about last week, and the check engine light comes on for emissions related issues. And and that's that's a big one. And and so. Dave, there's all kinds. Of, I mean, we have to – at some point, the catalytic converter is going to go bad, right? We have the misfire. We've ignored it. Or maybe – you know what the other thing that causes the catalytic converter to go bad? Motor oil. Oh, yeah. You, if you put the wrong motor oil in, in, in a car, for example, it's got too much ash in the oil. That can cause a problem. Overfilling the motor oil is going to cause the car to burn too much oil. Yeah, leaky, can, leaky valve seals. I mean, there's – That can ruin the, ruin the catalytic converter. So – uh, in a know, perfect world, they would never go bad, but we know everything upstream of them changes as the yes. car wears out. So you're at the auto shop because your check engine light came on. They call you up and they say your catalytic converter is bad, and now you know what it is because we just talked about it. And they say it's going to be $1,500. And you go, wow, my car is driving fine. That little yellow light's on, and now it's going to cost me $1,500. Okay. And this is where you know, you've know you got a car that's maybe 10 years old, 12 years old. 15 years old, needs a catalytic converter, and they're a lot of money. The reason they're a lot of money is because to build them right, they got to use a lot of precious metal, and it's expensive to produce that metal. And if you guys remember a number of years back when uh, people were stealing catalytic converters out of cars, you know, you come out and you're you know, start your car, and all of a sudden it yes, sounds like a that. race car. Yeah. You know, that's what was happening because there is a lot of precious metal in there. And, uh, you know, people would steal them out of your car and take them down to the recycler who, who wants those. They're very, very precious. So... Mm-hmm. There is a there's a couple ways to buy a catalytic converter. You can buy the factory original equipment catalytic converter. In most cases, I'm going to recommend you go that way. That's going to be your big 
thousand dollar ticket, fifteen hundred dollar ticket. Some go up as high as twenty five hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. They can get really expensive. And you can, hey, 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 wait a minute though. We can save ourselves a lot of money. I mean, we got. I called the exhaust shop. They got this aftermarket one, Dave. What about that? Mm. You know what? This is the time where we always revert back to the common theme we have at Bumper to Bumper Radio is the relationship with your shop. That's where you've got to sit down and be able to have a serious conversation. I mean, you've got a late model car or something. Well, you know, you got a newer car. It's not going to have a catalytic converter problem more likely. So we're we're typically talking about a car with over, wouldn't you agree? Over, over 100,000 100, miles. Over 100,000 miles typically. So the question is, what year is the car? Depending on how sophisticated the computer system is in the car may determine whether or not we want to go with an original or, or an aftermarket, where you are in the life cycle of the car, and also the type of catalytic converter. I, I think of these a lot like motor mounts in some ways, Dave. What's the problem between factory and aftermarket motor mounts? It's the fitment, right? The, the fitment is a big issue and the secret sauce in the rubber. Yeah. So in this case, the cal- you know, oftentimes the catalytic converters, they just don't fit right. When they're made to a manifold or something like that. So there's a lot that goes into making that decision. You have to work with your shop on it. But I would agree the overwhelming majority of the time, the factory catalytic converter is the way to go. Some people will never run into a catalytic converter purchase because they take care of their car. And you can take care of your car by changing the oil. We talked about getting you know oil in the combustion chamber because of using the wrong oil or whatever you may do. You know, one thing that, Matt, we talk about on the show a lot is batteries. You know, and you can have a battery that's weak and not quite working right, and that changes the way the car works and the way the car operates. And it's one of those things that you're like, oh, I need a battery. You can live with a bad battery that kind of turns over, vroom, you know, it's not real strong for a long time. That affects so many things, you know. Yeah. So that's the first thing we do when we pull a car in our bay is check the battery. And if it's got a bad battery, we've got interstate batteries on the shelf. We plug one of those in, and then we continue diagnosing that car because a lot of problems are caused by a bad battery. We use interstate because interstate's covered coast to coast. Everyone knows interstate battery. They make a great battery with a great warranty. So anyhow, when we come back, we're taking your phone calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. The good guys are back with the 20th Southwest Nationals Giant Car Show at Westworld of Scottsdale, November 17th through the 19th. Come on out and enjoy three huge days of automotive happening featuring over 3,000 classic hot rods, muscle cars, trucks, and custom. Visit vendor exhibits, shop the swap meet and cars for sale corral, and enjoy free fun stuff for the kids. And don't miss your chance to experience the earth shaking Nitro Thunderfest Dragster Exhibition and see the good guys' top 12 cars and trucks of the year up close and in person. For tickets and details, visit good-guys.com. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are helping you with your car at 602 277 5827. 602-277-KTAR. And uh, we're talking about catalytic converters today. And if you have a problem with your catalytic converter, give us a call. If you don't have a problem with your catalytic converter, but your window regulator, your window switch, or your radiator, or maybe you got some sort of weird noise, some sort of vibration, some sort of I don't know who to take it to kind of question. Some sort of something. Give us a call, 602-277-5827. I'll make sure Matt is on his best behavior. You can also text us at 411-923. And, Matt, I'm going to allow you to, because I don't have my phones turned on over here, Mm. you're going to have to pick and choose who we're going to be talking to over there. Oh, let's see here. We're going to take Linda. Linda's in Mesa. She's got a 2006 Chevy Cobalt. Linda, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you today? Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I don't have a catalytic converter question, but I do have a transmission shifter question. All righty. I think Dave can get all over that for you. Okay. My engine light has never come on, and it's intermittent 
my uh, shift will be really hard sometimes going speeding up from for first to second and second to third. Coming back down, it's fine. And I can't figure out a rhyme or reason. Now you say and I'm it, wondering what to do next. <laughs> you say you say intermittent. Does it typically happen after you've been driving for a while? Uh, yeah, like in the afternoon. It'll be fine in the morning. And if it happens, it happens in the afternoon. Right. Okay. What what happens a lot on that, and that's going to be, I'm not drawing the, the model number of transmissions in there, but it doesn't really matter. But what's happening is on longer drives or maybe in the afternoon when it's a little bit warmer outside, what's happening is your computer in the car is uh, picking up on some sort of issue with the transmission. So it could be it's having an issue with the sensor. It could be an issue with maybe it's slipping a little bit. Uh, any sort of issue going on. And what it does whenever it recognizes there's an issue is it will elevate the line pressure in the transmission. So what that means is just going to shift really hard until you turn the key off. It'll Whatever problem it was seeing is going to kind of clear out of the active memory for a moment. And the next time you drive it, it's going to work fine until it recognizes that same error again. Is that kind of a limp mode for the transmission, David? Yeah, it's a, it's a fail-safe or protection mode uh, that, that it goes into because it could be a relatively simple problem, but it doesn't want to burn up a perfectly good transmission because it's missing a speed sensor or a pressure switch or something in there. So, And it won't generally turn on the check engine light. That particular code, I think is the 1811 code, might be the code that's coming on, or input speed sensor code. Uh, that won't typically turn on the check engine light because it's not emissions related. It's not saying we have a you know an efficiency problem with the car. So basically, you're going to want to get to a to a shop that has the ability to diagnose transmissions. They're going to want to scan the transmission. Hopefully, there's a, a diagnostic trouble code stored in the computer. If it's, you know, for the shop, what we do when someone's got a real intermittent problem is we get them an event log, and that's just a, it's just a couple sheets of paper and each time they feel the issue they're going to write they're going to jot down some notes for us and we make it real easy for them so it, it's not like writing a book it's just circle this circle that circle the other and if somebody's had four or five events we can we can pick up on the pattern and so you can also notice the pattern yourself like we talk you said first i don't know the pattern but you said in the afternoon so that was a key part of that conversation so. right and, and something like that linda i think you're probably gonna it's one of those deals where you make an appointment you probably drop off the car one day so so a shop can have a chance to do some testing and driving as the car is warm and gone through a cycle and then have it again the next morning so if you want to do something like that the transmission shop that we recommend at bumper to bumper radio is tri-city transmission right there on the border tri-city tempe scottsdale mesa right in your neighborhood so give them a try and hopefully that works out for you all right thanks linda 602-277-5827 we're going to go with matt in phoenix he's got a 2016 toyota corolla how can we help you matt you're on bumper to bumper radio Hey, guys. Um, I love my Toyota Corolla, but I wouldn't mind squeezing a little more performance out of it. Um, is there any way to do that with different parts that won't void the warranty or blow it up? We can bolt a big old supercharger in that thing or something, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what I did when I was younger with my cars, <laughs> and then I'm going to right. tell, tell you why I don't recommend it, all right? Okay. When, when I was younger, the first thing I did is I drove down to the auto parts store, and I bought, you know, a modified filter, and then I and then I drove down to the muffler shop, and I bought a mod modified uh, muffler. And, brass packs. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it made it sound throaty. You know, it took away a little bit of that sleeper feel, and, and it did seem to have a, a little uptick, you know, as far as the performance goes. But anytime we change anything, and the reason I'm not a big fan is you love that car. That's a great car. Every time you turn the key, it starts right up. It drives. It does everything you wanted to do. But as soon as you start tweaking, you got to understand, Toyota, when they engineered that car, they did the math you know, a gazillion times over, and they said this is the most performance for the most efficiency for the most creature comfort, the most all those things. All those lines cross. There's an intersection, and they that's and, where they've right. the car. And they've hit it. So, you know, if we want to if we want to pep them up, there's not in the modern car. They're so advanced and they're so dialed in. It's hard to really pep them up too much. Well, yeah, but right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go a little bit contrary there, Dave. It's is what you would expect from me. I know. Contrarian. Uh, <laughs> you go go find you know, maybe go do a little searching. Go look around, see what the Toyota people are doing on the Toyota forums. Maybe there's something you just want a little more pep or you want maybe you just want to sound different. Maybe there's you know that that might be important. You know, some but, of the Toyota products you, you they actually have a factory supercharger well, that's you can what bolt I was on. T R D Toyota Racing Development. Toyota produces Part, performance parts for those cars. So go go search TRD Corolla parts, and then you might get to the factory Toyota page. 
that that will have those things. And if I was going to do something, I guess I might lean towards doing something from TRD. Yeah, so, so. something that's that's got some sort of engineering, you know, behind it. Remember those little those little things, those little uh, what were they called? Cyclones. You took off oh, yeah. the air filter boot, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then you stuck it in there, and you plugged it back in. You were going to get like thirty percent better gas mileage, thirty percent more horsepower, and your girlfriend was going to like you better. All that stuff, that thing, that yeah. little thing promised. For nineteen ninety nine. For nineteen ninety nine. Three payments of nineteen. And then the split fire spark plug, man, that would throw your <laughs> throw you back in the seat. Yeah. So anyway, but uh, you know the thing I like about this time of year, Matt, is the weather is perfect. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen all the hot rods running around town. Seems to be a little hot oh, rod mojo. They're coming out. They're Most of the old hot rods, they don't have air condition, you know, so you see them this time of year. You see them in the fall. You see them in the spring. And it is that time of year for uh, the Good Guys Car Show. So we are going to be talking to the people at the Good Guys Car Show. And, uh, you know, that's that's one thing I look forward to every year is getting out there because it, it, it just it's so nice. The what? only thing that scares me about going out there is buying something. Yeah. You get this taste, and all of a sudden, mm. you know, there's going to be a Camaro or a Chevelle in the driveway, and then uh, chances are I'll have to be figuring out how to live in it. <laughs> well, if you uh, had your you know. if you had your choice, and I have people ask me all the time, you know, Dave, you own an auto shop, you know, why don't you have like a muscle car or a classic car or something like that? It, it, and I don't necessarily know that I want one. I enjoy looking at them. I enjoy when other people have them. You know, but I, I've never done it. But if you were going to do one, Matt, what would you do? I, I think I know the answer to this, but I, what would you do? Well, I, I you know, I, part of me, I, so I have to pick an American muscle. I would probably go import if I had my first choice. But American muscle car, you know, I'm thinking Camaro, something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe some old tricked out rat rod or something, you know, just totally off the hook. If you had to go import, what would you do? Uh, it would be some kind of Porsche. Some kind of Porsche. Yeah. I think you you've talked about wanting a Volkswagen bus. Yeah, bus too. Yeah, yeah. That, I want to me that would be a cool car to deck out. I want to get rid out. of my Toyota truck and get a VW truck, but they're a little more expensive for the yeah. old ones. So anyhow, when we come back, we're uh, out with the people, of the Good Guys Car Show, and we're taking more phone calls at six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. We got Jim, Chris, Ken, and Pat, and time for more at Bumper to Bumper Radio. Having an accident is stressful. Dealing with a repair process shouldn't be. Hi, Leo Petrozella for Campus Body Salon. The right to choose a repair facility is yours, not the insurance companies. We work with all insurance companies, but we work for you. Campus Body Salon, bumper-to-bumper radio approved and independently family-owned and operated since 1973. Check out our Cash for Your Crash program where we pay you 10% off of your repair up to $1,000. Campus Body Salon, the best care in collision repair. Hi, I'm Dave Riccio, owner of Tri-City Transmission. Well, you may have come to know us for being a transmission expert. What you may not know is that our customers regularly ask us why we don't perform repairs to the rest of the vehicle. You guys are so great. Why work on just the transmission? Well, the request became hard to ignore, and three years ago, we began to build an infrastructure to perform general automotive repair. We weren't going to do general repair if we couldn't be great at it. So in 2013, we began the soft opening of Tri-City Auto Repair on Smith Road. We brought on ASC Master Technicians to work side-by-side with our Master Transmission Technicians. The combination of the best in both of these trades has created a synergy that allows us not only to fix your transmission, but to service and repair your whole car and to do it well. Let's face it, the modern car has become so integrated. We believe all of our expert knowledge puts us ahead of the curve. Find us at TriCityTransmission.com or TempeAutoRepairShop.com. That's (laughs) TempeAutoRepairShop.com. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family-owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long-lasting relationships and, oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet, and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise, and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby, and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do, and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. KTARFM, Glendale, Phoenix. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Arizona's news station. News station. KTAR. On air. 92.3 FM. Online at KTAR.com. And streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic. Now. 
It's 1130. I'm Tom Perumian. Here's our top story. A submarine belonging to the Argentine Navy with 44 crew members is missing. It's been missing since Wednesday, and a massive search is underway in the South Atlantic to find it. ABC News contributor Steve Ganyard says, You have cold water, you have rough seas, it's a long way from land, so it's tough to get rescue ships and airplanes out there, and we have no sign and no good indication of precisely where this submarine might be. The San Juan was on its way to its home base of Mar del Plata when Argentina's Navy lost communications with the sub. A fire aboard had been reported. The U.S. has deployed a NASA reconnaissance plane to help in the search. Trickle-down economics, an approach to tax overhaul popularized during the Reagan administration. The approach is embodied in the new Republican tax plan. The corporate tax rate would shrink from 35% to 20%. Republicans say that will unleash an economic boom. Critics say otherwise. Now let's get a check on traffic. Here's Mike Daniels in the KTAR Traffic Center. Accident at 47th Avenue and Baseline to watch out for and a wreck in the clearing stages on Osborne just west of Central. This report brought to you by ASU. For three straight years, the most innovative school in the nation, ahead of Stanford and MIT. Learn what ASU can do for your son or daughter at asu.edu. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. Checking weather, sunny and clear today, 79 the expected high, low 53 overnight. It'll be 81 and clear on Sunday. Right now, 72 degrees in Peoria. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. I'm Tom Perumian on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. Whether you're a lifelong dirt road driving, tackle box toting, weekend warrior, or an outdoor lifestyle rookie, from the desert to the mountains of our great state, Mike Russell has the outdoors in Arizona covered. This afternoon at 1 with Get Outdoors. Only on KTAR News 92.3 FM and streaming live on the KTAR News app. Get ready for the Good Guys 20th Southwest Nationals Giant Car Show at Westworld of Scottsdale, November 17th through the 19th. Take a trip down memory lane with over 3,000 hot rods, customs, muscle cars, trucks, and classics. Put your car and driving skills to the test at a Good Guys Autocross Racing Competition and earn a shot to compete in the Duel in the Desert Autocross Shootout Final. And bring out those late model show cars for our K&N Filters All-American Sunday Celebration open to all years of American-made or powered vehicles. For tickets and details, visit good-guys.com. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Ho, 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 and happy holidays. Bunker to Bunker, the golf show, invites you to celebrate the season at our annual Toys for Tots two-person scramble tournament at the Trilogy Golf Club at Vistancia. Join us Saturday, December 16th for golf, prizes, barbecue lunch, and after party. All for just $89 when you bring an unwrapped toy for the kids. Remember, bring a toy and Santa stuffs your stocking with a coupon for another round of golf. Space is limited, so don't miss out on our last event of the year. Register today at BunkerGolf.com. Few cities are as car-centric as Phoenix, and this is the show that'll help you to better understand that machine you depend on to get around the valley. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Enjoying this great November weather. We've got Gene, we've got Jim, we got Chris, Ken, and Pat on the line. We're getting ready to help you with your car. But Matt, you got something else in mind for the moment. I do. Like we were talking about before the, the break, we've got uh, the Good Guys Car Show happening this weekend and uh, twice a year. I love in Phoenix, it. up here at Westworld, mm-hmm. but now is the finals. You know, this is a, a car show tour that, that travels around the country, and uh, and I think we're going to have Betsy and Michael on the line here in a second, and uh, we're going to talk about good guys up there at Westworld, how you can get up there, go see some some hot rods. This is a family event. I, go, I like to take my kids out there. I like looking at the hot rods, but there's stuff for the kids to do. I think model cars and some painting. They've got autocross, and I believe we've got betsy who do we have with us out there maybe michael hey good morning fellas how are you doing well michael what's happening yep. out there 
Matt, good transition. You're going to really like what we're sitting out. I'm, I'm going to do a handoff to Betsy, our good partner here, obviously with good guys. And, yeah, it's an amazing thing. I'm going to give you two tips. One is, boy, get out here early. This is a huge crowd. This is the biggest I have ever seen it. And God bless us for Arizona weather. But for Matt, for you, for the transition is that we're sitting outside of a, a new booth. And I want you guys to talk with Betsy about some of the new cool stuff that I've never seen before. And one is so cool. We're sitting outside of the Traxxas, fastest name in radio control, the radio control cars. Mm, and these guys, oh, they're doing yeah. like a track, and their cars are flying 20 feet in the air. And, I mean, talk about a cool thing to have the kids come out and the family to get involved in. But there's so many new things. I'm going to do a quick handoff here. But, guys, come on out to our listeners at Bumper to Bumper. If you've never been out of here, you're really missing something special. And this year is really something special. It's the biggest I've ever seen in a lot of new vendors. If you're in the industry or you're in a club, a lot of cool vendors you can buy stuff for your cars out here for. Uh, bring your cars out here and for the whole family. So I'm going to do a quick handoff to Betsy. Guys, have a great weekend. And here's Betsy Bennett. All right. Thanks, Michael. Hello, Betsy. Hey, guys. How are you? I'm doing Fantastic. well. Sounds like you're having fun out there already. What's that? I said, sounds like you guys are having fun out there already. Wow. We're having a lot of fun out here. It's an amazing day out here at Westworld. And like Michael said, we've got some really cool things going on. The Traxxas booth is flying their RC cars, and the autocross is going. They're doing the final qualifying for the duel in the desert. So a lot of special area parking filled up. So there's a lot of great things to see out here today at Westworld. I want to know a little bit more. Well, first I want to tell people something. If You, you don't have to be the car person to go out here. It's good guys. You, know, you think a bunch of gearheads or a greasy. What well, I don't know what people think about about cars, but when you go out here, this is a lot of this cars is artwork. I mean, you look at the detail right. and the work that goes into this, and you not, may not be a car person, so to speak, but you're going to remember maybe your parents' old '58 Buick that was out there, or this '70 right, something right. that you had in high school, or something else like that. A lot of neat, and I'm I'm telling you, it's artwork really is but Betsy, it is yeah there's a it is true now michael said he said fun for the kids with the rc car but this is i mean my son i take him out there he loves it it's a kid thing but it's actually for the big kids too <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i'm a big kid so i like to go out there i like to watch yeah. the autocross now yeah that's right? my favorite so tell, tell us right. about that so the autocross is finishing up they're finishing up qualifying for the duel in the desert so the duel is a 32 car field shootout and we've been qualifying drivers all throughout our event season. There was actually 14 spots that guys could qualify for while they're here. So there's like 45 cars trying to race into 14 spots. And currently, Robbie Unser is running the fastest with about a 40-second lap mm. on the track. So he's running really fast in his Team Speedway 67 Camaro. He's running really fast. There's a lot of guys right behind him. So it's a really fast. Um, track with a lot of really hairpin turns, so it's going to be a good challenge for them today. Well, I know there's so much going on out there, and uh, you know, and I know you like all of it, but what's your favorite thing out there, Betsy? You know, my favorite thing is just seeing a gathering of about 3,000 cars in one place. Mm. Because like you said, it's really artwork, and it's like rolling history on wheels. Yeah, no, It's a really sure. cool step back in time to see a lot of these cars. Perfect. Now, Betsy, how how um, tell everybody how they can find you, how to get to Westworld, what the hours are, and where to get tickets and stuff. And yeah, we're gonna let we're you get back to We're out here today until five o'clock, and then we'll be here tomorrow eight to three. And tickets are available out here at Westworld, so twenty dollars general admission, and the kids seven, twelve, or six dollars. So we're gonna be out here all weekend. People can go to our website, which is good-guys.com and get information. There's an event schedule there, details for the event this weekend at Westworld. Well, fantastic. I look forward to seeing you out there today, and uh, we always this always makes it my favorite time of the year, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I appreciate all the help. Help and get the word out. All you're, right. You're Thanks, welcome. Betsy. Hey, and one thing I forgot to mention out there, in case you're hungry, they got it. I mean, <laughs> I go out there for the churros. The churros. I like those from Costco, but you know what I like? Well, it's close to Thanksgiving, but you got to have the turkey leg. You know what I mean? I mean, holy. Yeah. Holy shnikes. Yeah, it, uh, anyhow. All right, well, we got a, we got a board full of phone calls. Let's go with, uh, let's go with, uh, Ken in Mesa. He's got a 2006 Mitsubishi Endeavor. How can we help you, Ken? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. 
Yeah, my Mitsubishi was diagnosed a couple years ago with a bad catalytic converter. Uh, my question is, since the diagnosis, I was told it might have multiple. I don't know, does that mean two or three? I have no clue how many is on this thing. Yep, there, um, there could be multiples. You're, is that a V6? Yes. Yeah, it might have one on each bank of the engine, and it's part of the exhaust manifold quite possibly. So if it has – now, typically, if one goes, does the other go, or I might still just have one good one if I do have two? It's hard to say. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, like we said before, something will typically make that catalytic converter go bad. Um, you know, sometimes it's just high mileage. I wouldn't necessarily replace both of them at the same time just for the sake of doing it because they're expensive. Not giving them away. Yeah, and, and you have a choice. If it's part of the manifold, you can do one or two. Some cars, you take a Ford, for example, a lot of times it, it's a it's a man, it's an exhaust assembly, like they call it an H pipe because mm -hmm. it's shaped like an H, and or it's got pipe. four catalytic converters in it, or a Y, and it's got three in built in, but you don't have you don't have the choice. You have to replace it's them. It's all or all. nothing. Yeah. So in your car, I think you have some choices. But the other thing is, remember, something makes the catalytic converter go bad. What's going to make the converter go bad is raw fuel. You get that from a poor running engine or a misfire. The other thing that will make the car the the catalytic converter go bad is high NOx, the nitrates of oxygen. That damages the catalytic converter. Well, what causes nitrates of oxygen? It's, it's high cylinder temperature. So what causes high cylinder temperature? Carbon buildup, uh, poor, you know, not proper run timing. So don't make the mistake, folks, of just having the catalytic converter replaced. You have to make sure you fix the problem that caused that. And then oftentimes, it's sometimes just good preventative medicine. It's like a little vitamin. Put some engine decarb in there. Clean out the, you know, BG has a 44K product, they call it. Chevron has Tecron. There's a number of different things. Get a good fuel system cleaning product and run that right before or right after you clean the catalytic converter. Or have asked the shop what to do. Yeah, Ken, if you've got a good shop you're working with, have the conversation with them. That's where the relationship piece comes in. If you don't have a relationship with a shop, you can find a great shop at bumper to bumper radio dot com. Uh, by the way, while you're there, like us on Facebook. And uh, let's go with Jim in Glendale. He's got a 2003 Toyota Tundra pickup. How can we help you, Jim? You are on bumper. Well, about bumper. two weeks ago, the uh, radiator separated out it, so I went ahead and replaced it. And now it's developed in the morning after it gets hot and then cools off over the evening. It's developed a little water leak, but it's in the back of the engine. Near is coming up a uh, oil pan, and it's not the freeze plug on the side. I can see those. Is there by chance one in the far back of the block? Well, there's all kinds of stuff back there. Um, you know, I'm thinking of a heater hose, maybe. Um, yeah, there's all kinds the of V6 or V8 engine. Yeah, right? you're seeing stuff leak down off the back. You know, it could be you know up top, up in the intake area. You know, I know those intakes, a lot of them are dry anymore, but uh, something could be leaking up and then trickling down between the transmission, the engine, the bell housing, going all the way down. We don't see a lot of freeze plugs anymore in the back of the block. It used to be there a lot, but in the modern cars, I'm not seeing so many. You know, mm -hmm. there's ports for oil galleys and that kind of things, but but uh, I'm thinking something else. So hopefully it's not as serious. Like you said, it could be, you know, you know, water leaking and then running down, you know, to look like it's coming out of yeah. somewhere. Yeah, so coming. what we're going to do in our shop to find that, I mean, we're going to pressurize the system, which, of course, naturally happens when the car gets hot. But, Dave, we, we see things leak cold, but then you uh, warm up the car. You, yeah, they leak cold, you warm up the car, and then the leak goes away. So depending on what your circumstance is, you can – I would bet that's probably got the pinkish green – well, pinkish coolant in it still, pinkish red – you need a good flashlight and a mirror on a telescoping uh, pole that you can, you know, like the dentist, a little bigger, and you can get in there. And I bet you're going to find a little icicle or a stalactite or whatever they call it of, of where that has been dripping down for a period of time. You're going to be some crustacean buildup and follow the trail like a termite tube or something. You know, now here's the, here's the thing, too, that I, I think about. He had a radiator done, and this is one of those decision points when you're getting your car fixed. Okay, you got a radiator that is now, it's a 2003, so it's 14, 14 years old. you got a whole cooling system that's 14 years old. So that's where you're going to want to have the questions, you know, if, if your car was in the shop, is there anything else that we should be doing? They say, well, you know, the, they may look at the radiator hoses. They may look at heater hoses. They may look at other components in there because they're all they're all the same age, you know. And, and 
and, and, and maybe it is just the radiator. Maybe that's all they do because they say, you know what? Everything looks fantastic other than this split seam on the radiator. Okay, fine. Let's just do the radiator. But sometimes you'll see with cooling systems, you can kind of chase leak, the leak, the leak, the leak, and uh, you just end up fixing the next leak. And sometimes it's, you know, you get a whole lot more, uh, you know, summarize the system and take care of it. So anyhow, when we come back, we've got Gene and Gavin, and we are going to get to a bunch of texts. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Having an accident is stressful. Dealing with the repair process shouldn't be. Hi, Leo Petrozella for Campus Body Salon. We've taken the stress out of collision repair since 1973, and here's a couple of tips to de-stress your repair. Make your own choice. Some insurance companies try to convince you that you must use their approved shop for your repair. Not true. Arizona state law allows you to choose the facility that's right for you. Beware of the cheapest estimate. Typically, it's the one from the insurance company cutting corners to trim costs or focusing on appearance only. At Campus Body Salon, appearance is important, but structural integrity and safety are even more critical. Campus Body Salon, independent, family-owned and operated, and bumper-to-bumper radio approved. Check out our Cash for Your Crash program where we pay you 10% off of your repair up to $1,000. Campus Body Salon, the best care in collision repair. Are you looking for a refreshing change in customer service? I'm Lee Weatherby from Accurate Automotive. How about a refreshing change in your car repair relationship with honest, clear, and responsive service that looks out for your needs and not ours? For over 20 years, we've been delivering award-winning service provided by ASC certified technicians with one goal, looking out for your best interest. If it needs fixing, we'll tell you. If it doesn't, you'll know that too. I guarantee that you will not get that business-as-usual treatment at Accurate Automotive. Foreign and domestic, cars, trucks, and even fleet service, Accurate can handle your job. I invite you to come in and experience a refreshing difference in car repair and maintenance. Stop by for a free courtesy inspection. A $49 value. We feel it is well worth our investment in you because we know that good long-term relationships start early. With your first walk through our doors, I'm Lee Weatherby and I'll be there to greet you. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Ropeson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that will help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hopefully you're on your way out to the Good Guys Car Show and you're still tuning into our show. We love the loyalty. So anyhow, we've got Gene and Gavin waiting on the line, but I'm going to hit a couple of these texts. I have someone that texted us. They said, Hey, how do we get a hold of your guys' shops? Well, bumper to bumper radio.com, there is a list of dozens of great automotive repair shops that are on there. You'll find Matt's shop on there, you'll find my shop on there, but we're not the only. Bumper to bumper radio is about there's a network of good shops that support this show, and these are shops where the, the owner is on site, uh, and it's people that, that care about their business, they care about their customers. These are people you can often run into in the community. So if you are looking for that, bumper to bumper radio.com. And then, Matt, we've got a few, few people with 420 codes. This gentleman has, looks like he had the misfire issue, ran a misfire, got some coils replaced. And now he's got the 420 code, and that's what you were talking about. You can't ignore that check engine light. When it's flashing, for sure. When it's flashing, for sure. Now, the other thing people don't notice, their car misfiring. They're getting in their car. If it's kind of sputtery or just doesn't feel as crisp, you know, maybe something's going on in combination. You know, pay attention to your car in combination with that, that little yellow light. You know, sometimes I get in my wife's car, and I'm like... Wow, what is going on here? She's like, go, wow, it's actually got gas in it. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Maybe I won't run out. <laughs> My wife's car broke down this week <laughs> again. So uh, that's a long saga. Oh, okay. Wait a minute, That's Dave. a long whoa, 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 saga. Wait, 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 hold on. Hold, pump the brakes a little bit. Wasn't out of gas. I, you got in the car after school, and it just crank, 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 really? no start. So, uh, yeah. So I, I said, well, let's tow it to my shop first to make sure it's got gas in it. <laughs> it had gas in it, so it's uh, headed over to the old dealership there. On, the car's not that old, man. It's barely broken in. Right. So people say, oh, I'm just going to get a new car because I don't have to worry about it. Well, my wife's got a new car, and we worry about it. Well, it probably, uh, <laughs> probably needs a fuel pump since you ran out of gas so many times. But <laughs> yeah, right. uh, another one of these tech. Text message, 2009 Honda Pilot, 
check emissions dash light is on. I'm not I'm okay. not familiar with that. With a check emissions light, it probably check engine or is related to the emissions. So again, like we talked about last week, hey, which by the way, if you want to go listen to an old show, bumper to bumper radio dot com, and you can listen to the podcast and learn a little bit about what we talked about check engine lights last week. But that light comes on because the computer has detected a malfunction in some system that affects the emissions output of the tailpipe, and you need to get it fixed. So uh, go to your local repair shop that you have a relationship or hit bumper to bumper radiocom and someone will take care of it. I've you. got another one here, 2004 F-150 with a sticky lifter. Can you tell me a bit about it and what my options are for repair? I have 105,000 miles on the truck. My thing is, A, how does he know has a sticky lifter? Uh, you could put some of that sp- secret sauce in there, that uh, bolonium nitrate. It's kind of like bolonium carbide, but nitrate instead. But, yeah, nitrate do put, instead. Do you put Miracle Whip or pull, Mayo? Pull, pull that in. Pour that in the oil. It'd be good to go. But I would really have that diagnosed because I, I know that engine a little typical for having some valve train type issues. Mm-hmm. And in, in a technician who's familiar with the five five point four and that type of thing should really diagnose it. And we're not talking about the rookie. We're talking about the senior tech in the shop. There's a lot of moving parts. And, and he's, he's got to hear it, and he's got to kind of know what's going on. And, and there's some diagnostic steps there, too. So if it's just a tick, tick, tick noise, you know, tick, tick, tick noises sometimes are exhaust leaks, and people think they got a lifter noise. Yeah, and sometimes a tick, 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 just because the noise is little doesn't mean the problem is little. I mean, we've had customers ignore that little tick, 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 tick. Maybe it didn't cost them that much more, but, I mean, we've had them where then all of a sudden the lifter goes bad and sucks the valve, and then you're doing a valve job instead of pulling the thing apart and putting lifters on. I mean, neither one of them is happy money, but don't just assume it's sticking because it's ticking. All right, 1965 Ford Galaxy. Need a kick-down cable? Question, question, question. Good luck with that. No, that's going to be just a Google it search. Um, Ford clubs, people that are in, there's going to be a Ford Galaxy club. Find those people. The more people you know, the more information, because some of that stuff, I don't know off the top of my head, you know, how to how to track down a uh, kick down cable. But you know what, my shop, there's some old guys in there. They might know how to tr- track down a kick down <laughs> right? cable for a Galaxy. So, But uh, that's just going to be a little bit of Google finding uh, to get that thing. So anyhow, we got these phone calls we got to address. Let's go with Jean in Tempe. She's got a uh, Chevy, looks like maybe a Cavalier. Yeah, it's a Cavalier. Yeah, what's going on with it? I'm going to give you a really fast saga here. There's a popping or clunking noise in the rear passenger side mostly, like when I'm driving either slow or even at a little bit faster speed. It's got 150,000 miles on it, and I asked the shop, I just took it to a dealership, to check the shocks or spring. They said it might be a motor mount, but they just did the motor mounts two years ago, so they ran out of stuff, and I didn't know what else to say, so I just thought I'd ask you guys. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, I mean, because when you first said clunking, first thing that came to my mind was motor mount, and then you said the rear of the vehicle. Mm-hmm, so so passenger rear. That takes, that takes the motor mount concern out, out of the deal. And so is it happen over bumps? Like if you no, go over uh-huh. a bump? Okay. No, even when I'm going off straight away, it's at a slow speed even. so. And you don't even have a bowling ball in the trunk and anything like that? <laughs> That's what I checked was the trunk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, because sometimes, you know, I've found some noises. It just happened to be too much junk in the trunk. Yeah. But, um, you know, on something like that, you know, I literally if it was in my shop, I would put a technician in the right rear seat. And I would go take it for a drive, and I would have him, you know, doing all kinds of uh, contraption back there to try and hear this noise. You know, put your ear up to the glass. Mm-hmm. You know, some of these cars, you know, they got a seat that folds down. Stick your head back in there and see what happens. And I know, Matt, sometimes you'll put a technician in the trunk. In the trunk. It, in the trunk and go drive around so maybe he can find something. But you never well, know with these put, no- noises well, sometimes. Well, he's tricked the new guy into getting in the trunk. Oh, we, yeah. Yeah. A couple brake checks. You know. yeah. We were fixing a... We were fixing a uh, a, a, a police car one time at our shop, and we locked one of our employees in the back for a few hours. <laughs> in the sun. <laughs> he I, I, was resilient. Two, three weeks, he was talking again. I thought, uh, hopefully it was in the summertime. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, you're going to want to, somebody should be able to, you know, find that clunking noise. It's it's just a matter of if they're willing to look. So thanks for the call. You know, well, Dave, one of the other, uh, you know, we talk about the car shows and seeing the hot rods, uh, uh, coming around, people are getting those out. We've got some, you know, an email here from somebody. They're the the snowbird. That's not my term. That's the, that's their term. They say they're they're a snowbird. They're coming back into town. And what do they need to do? They the car had a dead battery, so they went and got an interstate battery. Asking about fuel. 
uh, this email that Mercedes has about a quarter tank of gas in it. What should they do? My advice is, you know, if it's been sitting for since the summer, you know, be, or since probably March, gasoline loses a little bit of octane every month as it just sits. It's going to be fine to start the car with. Go put a fresh heap of gas on top of it. You know, what is it, Dave, you say? The secret to pollution, pollution is, is dilution. dilution. <laughs> I stole that from uh, Jason, our oil guy. <laughs> yeah, so, so we want to just go, you know, in this case, I'd put some premium fuel on top of that. If the car, even if the car doesn't call for it, we always advocate putting in what the car calls for. In this case, put some premium unleaded in it. Go let the car maybe run for a half hour just idling. Make sure all the, you know, just things are working and take it for a ride. Give it an Italian tune-up. Yep. So anyhow, we're going to go with Gavin in Mesa. He's got a 2011 Ford F-150. How can we help you, Gavin? You're on bumper to bumper. Yeah, so I, I just picked up a 2011 Ford F-150 from, the, from a dealer. I use these vehicle, obviously. Um, two things. Um, I noticed when I'm in reverse only and I hit on the brake, there's kind of like a a clink, a clink or a knock. I guess a knock would be more accurate description of it. And um, I took it into the dealer, just got it back, still does it, but they say they tightened something that had to do with the engine and um, the transmission, but it still makes the noise. And then also aside from that, I'm noticing the truck has a, a slight lift on it. It's not six inch or anything like that. Um, or factory, but it's aftermarket, and I notice it, the miles run really, really fast on it. Mm -hmm. And we noticed the previous owner, he had put about 60,000 miles, it seemed like, on it in a very short period of time that he had it. It was within two years. Yeah, so, you know, the good news is you have a truck with a little less miles on it than you Yeah, thought. you got... <laughs> You stole that thing because it had <laughs> less miles than the guy selling it to you thought. But, uh, you know, as, as far as the noise and the clunking, you know, you start you start lifting vehicles. You start having clunks and stuff that go on. But, again, you know, if I got a vehicle that's got a clunk on it, you know, sometimes, Matt, we're over in the parking lot across my work because oh, yeah. it's big and empty. And I'll literally put a car up against the curb, and I'll be kind of power braking a little bit. He's up underneath the car going, oh, I see it. I see it. You know, the center support's moving a little bit, or he sees something. That's what it takes to fix cars anymore. It's not like you just plug into it and it tells you what's wrong with and it. And that's what it takes to fix a car that hasn't been modified. Before you can even do that, you got to go check and make sure all that other bolt-on stuff is still bolted on the right way, too. So. so, anyhow, thanks for joining us. Make sure to get out there to the Good Guys Car Show. Thanks, Bree, for running the dials. Remember, for a, a relationship with a great shop, bumper to bumperradio.com. We'll see you next week. <laughs>